Hi, and welcome to the tutorial for paired t-tests. And this is a combination of PowerPoint slides as well as an SPSS um, walkthrough. So let's go ahead and imagine a scenario. So the scenario for this class example is going to be, imagine that a graduate student just realized that she has way too many shoes in her closet. And based off of real life scenarios, she hypothesizes that the number of shoes owned by female graduate students increases from the first year to the fifth year of being a student. And so being a true graduate student, she decides to determine if this is a trend that we see with other female graduate students. So what is a pair T test going to do for us? The pair T test is the test you use when you're trying to compare the means of two related or linked variables. So in this case, we have the ultimate linked variable. It would be the mean number of shoes owned by graduate students in the first year. So each person, each individual in the first year's number of shoes compared to that individual's number of shoes owned in the fifth year. Um, this is sort of a repeated measure, but it doesn't always have to be a repeated measure. Anytime that two variables can be related in any way, you can use a paired t-test. So another example would be husband and wife pairs, so or um, twins or siblings within one family. And what this does is that it computes the difference between the two variables for each case, then tests to see if that average difference is significantly different from zero. So let's take a look at what the statistical hypotheses look like. What you have is um, the null hypothesis, which is that the mu d, which is the difference, um, there is no significant difference between the means during the first year and the fifth year versus the alternate or research hypothesis that mu d does not equal zero, so that there is a significant difference between the means during the first and fifth year. So this is what you would write out if you were to write out your statistical hypotheses. And we take the mean number of shoes during the first year compared to the fifth year. So we have to remember that it's the mean number compared to another mean number. This is also, you can consider the same as, these equivalent unpaired t-test hypotheses. So from our previous section on unpaired t-tests, this is how we would state our statistical hypotheses. This mu d is also doing this same type of hypotheses. But because we have a paired difference, the hypothesis is expressed in terms of mean difference. So the only vector we're understanding here is the difference. So let's go ahead and take a look at the SPSS output we have. So this is output for fictitious data collected by this female graduate student. So what you have here is you have your ID number um, for each participant. We can see that we have 10 participants in our sample. Sh the number of shoes in the first year of grad school, the number of shoes in the fifth year of grad school, and a computed difference score just so we could take a look. So how are we going to conduct a paired t-test? We go to analyze, compare means, Paired samples t-tests, select that, and you'll see here this is where we're going to select our pairs. There are two ways of doing it. You can either select and move over, or another way of doing it is, is to just drag it over, and you can see that it works just the same. Oops, let's try that again. There you go. We can select our options right here and we can see that we can change our confidence interval so perhaps to 99% confidence interval and again this is our option for how to treat missing values we can exclude cases analysis by analysis so depending on what we're doing analyses on it might or might not exclude an individual versus exclude cases list wise if an individual has missing data on any of the variables of interest they'll be excluded from all analyses we can leave it with the default for now and we can press continue we can go ahead and press ok and we will get our output so what you get here is um, your 
statistics, your descriptive statistics, your correlation between the two variables, and as well as your paired samples t-test output. The biggest difference between this output and an unpaired t-test output is that you will not see the Levine test for equality of variances. You see here we only have one option as to what kind of output we're looking at. The biggest difference is in the underlying assumptions. If you recall from the unpaired t-test, we had three assumptions. We had the assumption of normality of your populations of interest, and we also had the assumption of equality of variances, and last, we had the assumption that our observations were independent. In this case, we know that our observations are paired, so that is not an underlying assumption here and it is also not an underlying assumption that there is a quality of variances because there is only one vector that's the difference score here and so the only assumption that we are left with for the paired t-test is the fact that it expects that there is a normal distribution of the difference scores so we didn't actually check that assumption so how can we go back and check that assumption we can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. I want to move my difference score that I calculated into my dependence list. And then I want the formal test of whether my variables are normally distributed. And that can be obtained here in our plots options, normality plots or tests. I can unclick stem and leaf. I don't need that. I just need this. Go ahead and press continue and you can press OK or paste. What we should get is our test of normality. We need to go ahead and use the Shapiro-Wilk test and because we have less than 50 participants and what this means it is not statistically significant which means that our data is normally distributed so it is not statistically significantly different from a normal distribution so we're okay so we are we have met the only underlying assumption of a paired t-test so let's go ahead and let's look back to our t-test output um, you can see here so this mean right here all this is is a difference score between the two means here so the difference between 24.7 and 7 is 17.7 to get our t-value, we're going to divide this mean difference over the standard error of the mean here, and that should give us our calculated t with 9 degrees of freedom, which is n minus the number of pairs, minus 1. So we have 10 pairs, and it is 9. And we can see that our test is statistically significant, meaning that there is a significant difference in the number of shoes in the first year of grad school and the number of shoes in the fifth year of grad school. We can go ahead and take a look at our mean values and we can tell that we have significantly more shoes in the fifth year of grad school than the first year of grad school. I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a fun time running paired t-tests.